it's not. So hello everyone, welcome to the first session uh, of this year of the Chilean Probability Seminar. We have the pleasure of having Rodrigo Ribeiro uh, from the University of Denver, who is going to talk to us about wandering architects, the dual perspectives of self-creating random walks. All yours, Rodrigo. Hello, everyone. So I, first, like, I'd like to, to thank Dieter for suggesting having me here and also to the organizers for arranging everything. And also, I'd like to apologize for the, the title. Like, I wanted to come up with something like poetic and informative, but now listen to Santiago reading it out loud. I think I didn't get none of those things. So, but I, <laughs> I hope like eventually you guys get what I meant. So... Okay, so I, I divided this talk into more or less five or six moments. It's, so we're gonna begin by the definition of the model, what I mean by the tree builder run the walk. And then I'm gonna talk about some of the challenges, the technical challenges that you face when you are dealing with this model. And later, well, this is a model that you can see from two different perspectives. You can see it as a random walk, in a random media or a random graph model. So I'm gonna uh, discuss these two perspectives separately. And then I will talk up, discuss a, a little bit about some interesting open problems. And if time allows me, I will uh, say a couple words about the, about the proofs. So, okay. So what is this tree builder random walk? Well, to define the model, you need to prescribe a sequence of random variables supported on the natural numbers. So I will, throughout this presentation, will be always chi. Uh, and an initial condition would usually will be a finite rooted tree, T naught. Rooted tree is just like there is a distinguished vertex of this tree, T naught. And the vertex X naught, that'll be just a vertex of T naught. It could be the root itself. Okay, so you need to, to initialize the model, to define the model, you need a sequence of random variables supported on the natural numbers and an initial condition, which is a tree and uh, one vertex of this tree. So then we generate, what, what are we gonna generate here is a pair that is a rooted tree, the first component, and the second component is a vertex of this tree here. And we're gonna generate this sequence inductively. So in order to obtain the Tn plus one, Xn plus one, we obtain it by performing some operation on the previous step. So first we obtain the tree Tn plus one. How we do that? Well, this guy here is a vertex of Tn. So we add these many new vertices to the position to, the, to this vertex here. So, we sample some vertices according to the law of this random variable here, and then we add these new vertex to this end here, which is uh, a vertex of the tree at time n. So this new graph is Tn plus one. Well, it could be just Tn if this guy here is zero, so then you're not actually changing your tree at time n. So Tn will be exactly T, Tn plus one will be exactly Tn. So this is a way to generate the first component of the, the next pair. And then the way we obtain Xn plus one, well, Xn plus one is just a uniformly chosen neighbor of this vertex Xn. But now in the possibly updated tree Tn plus one. So this is not a typo. I really, it's, you can, in this step here, you can add a couple of vertices. And then in this step here, you could have Xn plus one being uh, one of these new vertices. So this is what we call the tree builder on the walk because you are building uh, a tree using the trajectory of this guy here, which is a, a random walk. And we're gonna refer for all this presentation to this process here as the leaf process. It's just because this process here is the process that is controlling the number of vertices that you can add at each step. So this is the leaf process. Is everything okay up to here? 
So, okay, so here we, we, we're going to see a, a small simulation. So this is my initial condition, C0. So this guy here is the root, and this orange here is the walker. And here we're going to, my leaf process will be just an IID sequence of Bernoulli random variables with parameter 0.5. In words, at each step, so with probability 0.5, I have at each step, I add a new vertex with probability 0.5. And with probability 0.5, I don't change the environment. Yeah. I keep it as it is. So let, let's run this. So, so this is the, a movie, a picture to have in mind throughout the presentation. So as the walker moves, it flips a coin and decides, what, according to this coin, whether it changes its environment or not. And then it performs a, uh, a step of a random walk on the possibly updated tree. So of course, like you can play with these leaf process here, right? Like if you change this for a more complicated distribution, for instance, you could put here a binomial distribution. So then here at each step, you would have a new ch a chance of adding more than one vertex. You could add like 10 vertex at once. So, but this, the number of, of vertices that you can add at each step is controlled by this process here. Okay, so, oops. So as you can see, like, we can have different perspectives. We can see this model from different perspectives, right? Like w one is, well, let's just care about the trajectory of this yellow, of this orange dot here, which is the random walk perspective. You can ask questions about how far is it going from this uh, starting point for this root here. You can ask questions about, is it going to visit uh, vertices too often or not, infinitely often or not? So this is the random walk perspective. Or, well, we could just forget about the trajectory forget about the walker and just focus on the evolution of this tree here that has been built by uh, the, the random walk. So these are the two obvious perspectives in this model. And then we're gonna explore both of them in this talk. But before we, I, we talk about specifically about each of these perspectives, let me just say a couple of words about the challenges that we have uh, when we were dealing with this model, investigating this model. So the problem with this model is, well, we are generating the sequence, right? Tn, Xn, Tn is the environment, is the tree at time n, and Xn now is, is the position of the walker. But uh, if you wanna investigate like one of these components, we have a problem because we have some sort of chicken egg problem, a chicken egg effect here. What I mean by that, it's, well, let's say that you want to understand the behavior of the, of the walker, of this component here. So, uh, well, the behavior of the walker depends, for instance, on the vertices that the walker is seeing as it walks, right? So if you, if you are stepping on vertices with a high degree, they tend to send you away from the root, right? Because there is only, because of the tree structure, there is only one path connecting the walker to the root. And so if you add a lot of vertices to the position that you are, so chances are that you go down. So you will increase your distance. Or if you are, when you step on a vertex that he already has a high degree, so this vertex will create a, a drift away from the root, for instance. So the drift of the walker depends on the degree distribution, which is something about the environment, about the tree, right? So if the degree distribution of the tree, of this component here is a habit area, well, this means that you're gonna see a lot of vertices with high degree. So you're gonna step on them and then they will push you away from the, from the root. And also like the walker depends on mixing properties of its environment. It's, uh, for instance, the mixing properties on trees, they depend like the, the bounds that we have for mixing time on trees, they depend on, for instance, on graph observables like, like the height. 
So this means that if you want to understand the distribution of the of the walker after a certain number of times, well, you might need some information about mixing time. So if you are close to the mixing of the environment, probably you are distributed, uh, you are close to the stationary distribution. But these things depends on the structure, the geometry of the environment, right? But on the other hand, the, the environment depends on the trajectory of the walk, right? For instance, if the walk is visiting vertices too often, so the degree distribution probably is not visiting too often, the degree distribution probably will have an exponential tail because the only way to increase the, the degree of vertices is, is stepping on them and then flipping a coin and adding, vert adding vertices there. So if you want to understand the behavior of the walker, you need to understand some properties of its environment. But this, these properties of the, the environment that you need to understand, they depend on the trajectory of the walker itself. So this is what I mean by this chicken and egg. Like, so if you want to understand the walker, you need to understand the environment. But if you want to understand the, the environment, you need to understand the, the trajectory of the walker. So this is one of the reasons why the, the most of the arguments that we have for this model, they are a little bit convoluted because uh, you need some sort of bootstrap argument. So if you wanna understand like something, if you wanna say something about the trajectory of the walker, well, usually the first steps are, let's try to prove some rough bounds about the, the environment. And then you use this bound to prove something about the trajectory of the walker. And then you plug it back here to obtain some new information about the, some finer information about the, the, the environment. And then you use this finer information to finally obtain better results for the, for the, the walker. So, so it's, it's impossible to decouple these two components, right? So this imposes some technical challenges. Sometimes the, the, the arguments, you, you, you need to do this back and forth. like prove something about the environment, get something back for the walker, then get something back for the environment, and you need to do this. And this makes the proofs a little bit lengthy and the arguments a little bit convoluted, but it's it's something that uh, I, I don't think it's possible to avoid because I don't think it's possible to decouple these, these two processes. Okay, so these are like the most obvious problems that we face when we are dealing with this problem. And now I'd like to talk about one specific uh, perspective of this model. So what are the results that we have when you see this model as a random walk on some sort of random environment? So in the random walk perspective, we focus on the second component of the process, right? which is the walker's trajectory. And this is an example of a no Markov and random walk, right? If you just focus on the, on the projection on the second component on the, so this X process is a no Markov and random walk. And the reason is like, you do need information about the, the environment, right? Like knowing the trajectory only is not enough to, to know the distribution of the next step. Because you need information about the about the environment, how how the the, the walker uh, build the environment. So it's a norm. The, this component alone is a non Markovian random walk. Okay, so this is a general stuff about random walks. Like usually, the 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 main questions, the first questions when you are dealing with random walks are they concern the, this dichotomy of transients and recurrence. Transients and recurrence, they are different answers to the same question. Uh, and the question is, does the walk visit any vertex infinitely many times? In the context of the tree build around the walk, this any here means also even the future vertices to be added by the process eventually. So recurrence means like, Every single vertex will be visited infinitely often, uh, infinitely many times. So this is what I mean by recurrence in this context. So not only you're not only visiting the old vertices uh, with probability one infinitely often, but you, you are also even the vertices that appear later that are being 
they are added by the process later, they are also visited infinitely often with probability one. And transients, we say that the, the walker in this case is transient if for any vertex, the probability of visiting it infinitely often is zero. So, okay, so here we have an inst instance of the walker. And often in transients, when we are talking about uh, random walks, transients comes associated to a notion of like escaping to infinity. So the reason why you're not visiting vertices uh, infinitely often is because the process, the walker is escaping to infinity somehow. And in the context of the tree builder, we do have a way to measure this distance, right? This is the, the reason why we, we introduced this root. So in this case here, so the root is here and the walker is here. And suppose that what we are seeing here, this is the, the tree and the walker after n steps. So we have a natural notion of distance, right? So if you want, we can just measure the distance uh, from the root. So which would be the length of this path here connecting the root and the on the walker. So we have a natural notion of the distance. And if we can measure distance, we can also measure the speed, right? So, so we can also, so we have this natural notion of escaping to infinity. And we also have a notion of, we can also measure how fast, if the walker is going to infinity, we can measure how fast the walker is, is going to infinity. We can just divide this distance here by the time. So, I'm saying this because I need to introduce a new terminology here, which is the uh, ballisticity. So we say that the walker is ballistic if um, this link infimo here is positive. So this fraction here is exactly the speed, right? So this is the distance of the walker from the road at time n, and I'm dividing it by n, which is the time. So this is the, the, the speed a time in, and a ballistic random walk is moving away from the root at linear speed. So the picture to have in mind is like after n steps, typically you're gonna find the walker, some, the distance from between the walker and the root is of order n, after n steps. Uh, so far, so good. You guys can stop me whenever you want. Uh, okay. So usually in the tree builder, the notion of recurrence, transients, and ballisticity, they are connected to certain conditions on the leaf process. So being recurrent or being transient or being ballistic, uh, you can capture those things by only looking at the leaf process. So we say that the leaf process is elliptic if for all n, the probability of key n being larger than one is positive. But what I mean by this in words, in words, so remember that this is the guy that gives you the number of vertices that you add at time n. So this probability here is, a, is the probability of adding at least one vertex at time n. So an elliptic, elliptic Leaf process gives the walker the chance, a positive chance to add at least one vertex uh, every time. At each step of the walker, if you are prescribing to the walker uh, an elliptic um, leaf process, the walker always have a positive probability of adding at least uh, one vertex. This probability can might be time dependent, could go to zero, but it's just like for each time you fix the time, this if this probability is positive for all times, so then you have a elliptic elliptic uh, lift process. So just one question. Can... Yeah. So Cayenne is not IID, it's just uh, that they are they are independent or yeah, not necessarily. It can be like you can have dependence on this process. Okay. In principle. <laughs> just <laughs> theoretically, yeah. right? Of the tree also. I'm sorry, say that again. On the, on the shape of the tree, for example? Yeah, I, 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 yes. You could, you could have like some, you could create some sort of crazy dependence that like, for instance, this guy here looks 
at the history and looks like how many verses you added and then decides to be zero, for instance, just because you already added too many, too many verses. So in that case, this would affect like not only the shape of the tree, but also the speed of the of the walker. Yeah, but it's an interesting question. Yeah. Well, the cases that we're gonna consider here are independent in general, but it can also add some uh, dependence on the leaf process. They're independent, but they will depend on time, or just always like IID. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, I I I can't hear you properly. So for the cases you are going to work with, they are always like uh, IN are going to be independent, but not IID. Not necessarily IID. Yes. Yes. There are some some cases in which they do not need to be uh, uh, independent, but if you have some sort of convergence, so then you can also uh, have some of the, the results that we have. But here for this talk, we're going to consider the case that they are independent. Thank you. Uh, and what we have also a stronger notion, uh, which is the uniformly elliptic. So the leaf process is uniformly elliptic if the infimum of this probability is positive, is bounded away from zero. In words, what is the effect of this uniform elliptic condition on the walker? So this means in words that at each step, the walker has uh, a, a probability of at least kappa of adding at least one vertex. And this, this notion here, this, I, this feature that you can add at each step at least one a vertex with a probability that is bounded away from zero is crucial. So in this, uh, this is the first result that we have. So in a in a work in a joint work with Giulio Jacobelli, Glauco Valli, and Leonel Zwasnabar, if you if you start with an independent leaf process satisfying the uniform elliptic condition, so then the work is ballistic. So this link infimum is positive with probability one. So you are like moving away from the root at linear speed. So this is like something like tracing a parallel with the more classic theory of random walks and random environment. So this is this uniform elliptic condition here. There is an equivalent on the on random walks on random environments, the classical theory, which is pretty close uh, in the spirit looks like this, the one that we have here. But uh, being uniform elliptic, it's not enough to be ballistic on random walks and random environments. So you have like other conditions like the T condition, the polynomial conditions, they are equivalent, but they are really hard to check. So because they depend, like if you wanna check like the, the polynomial condition for random walks and random environment, you need to check like, they have to do with the probability of crossing slabs on the wrong direction like against the 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 direction of your velocity so so you have to deal with the the the, the trajectory of the walker but in this case here it's we have a really simple condition like so if you want to check uh, uh ballisticity you just need to check this condition here so what do we what do we, what do you have is just like a, con a distributional condition on the leaf process only you don't have to deal with the 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 process the, the the walker itself so if you want to produce elliptic uh, ballistic uh, examples in the tree builder it's 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 easy right for instance if you start with an iid in non degenerate sequence you are done they are ballistic uh, just one question Ruben. yeah so, so if you have do you have monotonicity so like if i change one of the random variables but something that is that Domin it's dominated stochastically or what, the other one? Oh, that yeah, is I'm, I'm going to get there. But this is a crucial question. Like, for instance, uh, take this process here as just like a Bernoulli random variables with parameter P. So I really, this actually was a question suggested by Yuval Perez. Is like, is the speed uh, monotone on the, on the parameter of this leaf process here, for instance? 
but uh it's it's usually these are like hard uh, these are the type of theorems that are hard to get because you don't have a a, a, a monotone coupling if you want to compare two dis different instances of this process suppose that one is using a uh, you have two two walkers that they are they have just like uh, they are just flipping coins. So these are just Bernoulli random variables. One with a parameter p, another one with parameter q, and one is larger than the other. It, it's it's hard to keep them walking together or to comp to keep one above the other. Suppose that they are walking together, and then the one with the one that is more likely to add a, a, a leaf, at some point will add a leaf, but this one here is not seeing this new leaf. So this guy could step here, okay. But this one, maybe you have a vertex here and this one could step here and then at some point they do this. So even this guy is with a parameter that is smaller, has a smaller chance to add vertices, but it could be below, could be further away from the root than this one. So the speed at that time of this one will be larger. So questions involving any kind of uh, monotone property for this model, they are hard to get, but they are really interesting questions in general. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the, the, the other natural question here, I'm just like stating a, a theorem about the limb infimo. You could just, the natural, the next natural question would be, what about the law of large numbers, like about the limit? And well, in this degree of generality here, you might not have uh, a law of large numbers for the distance. You might not have like a well-defined speed. And the example is, uh, is not that hard to construct, but the idea goes like this. You, you create a, a tree build around the walk that uses two types of coins. One coin with a parameter P, another coin with parameter Q. Mm -hmm. So you let the walker using just one coin for a huge amount of time. And when the log large numbers for this process kicks in, you flip, you change the, the, the parameter of the coin. And now you let the process just use this coin with a different pa parameter. So the effect of this construction is you end up with, uh, with a random walk that is speeding up and is slowing down, speeding up and slowing down all the time. So this prevents you of having like a well-defined speed. So if you choose this sequence here, space out properly, so then you can prove this. The, the limit does not exist. So the probability that the limit exists is zero. So in general, you do not have uh, a proper, a well-defined speed for the walk. You, you do not have uh, like the, a, low, a low of large numbers here. But if you start with an IID process, an IID leaf process, so then the walker has a well-defined speed. So then you do have a constant that depends only on this distribution here for which your this constant will be your your speed, right? So your the speed is converging to this constant. So in general, you do not have law of large numbers, but if you have an IID leaf process, so then your walker is ballistic. In, but not only that, but you have a well defined speed for for the for the walker. So we also have all the limit theorems. So under the same settings, IID leaf process, of course, a distribution different than the, the one that puts the whole mass on zero, because otherwise you'll be in the case that the walker is walking on a fixed graph without adding any, any vertex. So then we also have a lot of iterated logarithm. And we also have CLT theorems mm -hmm. for, for, for the distance. And we also have functional C CLT theorems. If time allows me, I'm going to uh, talk about a little bit about how we get all these theorems. But essentially, we, 
we construct a renewal structure and then we gain all these theorems for free from the renewal structure. For those who are familiar with random walks on random environments, it's something similar in spirit to what Snitchman did for random walks on random, random environments. Okay, so it's for the IID case, the speed is, is well understood. You have a lot of large numbers, a lot of iterative logarithm, CLT, functional CLT. And we even have continuity of the speed. If, again, you start with an IID leaf process, we know that the walk is ballistic with a well-defined speed that depends only on the distribution of this leaf process. And so we can see the speed as a function from the space of probability distribution over the natural numbers to the interval 0, 1. So seen this way, if you add here the total variation distance to make this guy a metric space, so then the, the speed function is continuous. So we have this also this result about the, about the, the limit object as well. Okay, so all these are results about uh, the ballistic regime, right? So we are talking about the speed, the walking is moving away uh, at linear speed from the root, but uh, what about recurrence? So one thing that we already know is that if you wanna observe recurrence in the tree builder on the walk, you need to drop the uniform elliptic condition because if you prescribe like a uniform elliptic condition, in a in an independent to an independent uh, leaf process, you're gonna be ballistic. So, well, one way to drop the uniform elliptic condition is choosing a leaf process that works like this. The probability of adding at least one vertex at time n is some constant pn, pn, and it goes to zero in time. So, in terms of the process from the perspective of the walker, this means that adding at least one new vertex to the to the environment is becoming harder and harder. And one way to choose like a sequence like this is you start with a Bernoulli sequence with a time dependent parameter that is going to zero polynomially fast. One observation about this is that if if gamma is larger than one, the walk is recurrent. You gain this for free. And why is there? It's just like a Borel Cantelli argument. So these guys, this is the probability of adding at least one vertex at time n. If you sum over this and you get something summable, well, by Borel Cantelli, the number of vertices that you're gonna add to this process is finite. So at some random time, the walker will stop adding new, new leaves to the process. And then what you see is just a random walk on a frozen and a finite graph, so which is recurrent. But of course, we, we wanted something more interesting than this. This is obviously uh, recurrent. And indeed, it's possible to do better than that. And in a work in collaboration with Janusz Englander and Giulio Jacobelli, we showed that for gamma, above one half, the walker is a curve. So in words, if you have a, a walker that with probability one over n to the gamma, it adds one vertex to its position at time n. If this gamma is larger than one half, so then the walker is recurrent. So what I mean is like the walker will visit all vertices infinitely often with probability one. So even the vertices that will be added in the future, they also will be visiting finally often. So we, so we also have recurrence for a non-trivial case of recurrence. What, what I mean by non-trivial is because, well, the number, if you are like above one half, but it's smaller than one, the number of vertices that you're gonna add on, on, the, on, the, on the tree is infinite. So the tree is growing, but still, you're visiting infinitely often all the vertices. So, 
So this is like the 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 scenario for the results the results that we have for the the random walk perspective. And now let's shift to the random graph perspective. So in the random graph perspective, we focus on the first component, on the graph component of the process, which is TN. Well, what we have here is a tree being built by a random walk. Well, this idea, this yeah. idea of generating, I'm sorry? Just another question. So if I if I'm doing my numerology right, essentially like both cases that you showed us, you have a limit from the random like you, you never have a vertex that have infinite degree at the end no is that somehow what you can treat so I'm, like, I'm sorry say say that again yeah i'm sorry so like i think in or if i'm doing my numerology right in all uh -huh. of this you showed us like in the recurrence or in the transients you are having a local limit of your graph no like you never have a point that has infinite degree am i you may have a point that you have an infinite degree. I, I think you don't, but I'm I'm not sure if my numerology is right. So you're so, okay. so okay, so uh, we do have some results about the degree distribution, and for the recurrent case, uh, you don't have vertices with infinite degree. So is is there a case where you are recurrent? And, 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 and obviously, and also, and also transient, right? Because actually, you're not like when you are like ballistic, you're not visiting the vertices uh, infinitely often. You're just moving away from them. So in this case, it's more obvious. What is not obvious, and you're right, is that in the recurrent case, I'm going to get there uh, like in this moment. In the recurrent case, you do not have vertices with infinite degree. So, so is there a case where you are recurrent, but you have a vertex with infinite degree? Hmm. This is an interesting question. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's hard to tell. Like my guess would be maybe because you can play a lot with the leaf process. You can add like more than one vertex uh, at once. But uh, this somehow could prevent, could ruin up like you are being recurrent, right? Like this is an interesting question because it's. If you feel like if you're growing this guy too fast, if in, in, in a way that you still have like vertices with infinite degree at the limit, this gives an idea that you shouldn't be recurrent somehow. It's uh yeah, yeah, good question. I'm gonna put then on the list of open questions at the end of the section. Yeah, but then Do you, you have said, a... then you say that you can take dependence on the state of the graph. So you can just say that if I'm not in my target vertex. I do not add any new vertex. And when you find yourself in the vertex that you want to make have infinite degree, then you always add, I don't know, some vertices. And continues like that. So okay, so okay. So let, let me let me rephrase this. So when I say like by infinite degree, I mean the proportion. The degree of vertices, they are going to infinity. Like if you just fix one vertex and you keep track on the on its degree. Its degree is going. Uh, uh, yes, its degree is going to go to infinity in the recurrent case. Like if you fix a vertex. But what I mean by like infinite degree, it's like the proportion. Like you don't. If you normalize this, you you don't you kill those vertices with like large degree. But like, if you like the degree of a, of a single vertex, all the degrees of a single vertex, they are going to infinity. If you don't normalize by anything, is that what you're asking? Like, yeah, I, I thought that the degree of a single one was not going to infinity because the thing was not the sum was finite. No. But maybe oh was... no 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 yeah. In, in the case of the recurrent, in, in the recurrent case, the degrees are going to infinity. Okay. Yeah. Of yes. But what I was trying to say is like, but still, when you look at the, the, the distribution, when you look at the distribution, like count the number of vertices with a fixed degree. So this converts to a constant. And this 
It, it gives you a distribution, so you're not losing any mass to the infinity. I see. I'm sorry about the confusion. Like it, it's, I'm, I'm I'm not hearing you guys. Like, so I'm kind of guessing what you're asking. Yes, sir. Do, do you have a notion for this of null recurrence or positive recurrence? So... Oh yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, these are notions that it can also extend to this to this model, right? Uh, it's just that the null but, case may be similar to transients or something like that, where you get this infinity. Yeah. So so yeah, the results that we have about recurrence they did not involve um, capturing this um, stronger sense of recurrence, like for instance, being positive recurrent. But of course, you can extend them. We. We kind of tried this in a in a paper that we have um, on Bernoulli. We addressed the question about like showing uh, no recurrence and and positive recurrence, but uh, we we needed to submit a hata and we need to fix uh, a, a problem that we had on another theorem, and then we we lost the 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 result about no recurrence and, and positive recurrence. It's a uh, it's it's harder than we we realize actually, this like showing this kind of stuff because you need like more proper control, finer control over the time. How much time do you get to do you get to visit the the vertices and the, the environment is growing, so you cannot rely too much on mixing things, on mixing time things. So it's 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 much harder, but uh, it's a natural question. You, you, you're right. So uh, about the, the, the random graph perspective, this idea of generating graphs using random walk is nothing new. It's uh, the first papers that I'm aware of, they come from computer science and physics. So the goal was to generate networks using local rules only, because some of the models who generate random graphs, they use um, this, uh, essentially global knowledge. At each step, you add a new vertex to the network and these new ver vertex can be added to any possible vertex in the network. So this is what they call global knowledge. And, and people for computer science and physics, they say that this is not realistic if you want to model uh, real phenomena. So they wanted to come up with like a network that is growing, but growing only based on local roles. So this is why they come up with this idea of generating graphs using random walks. But uh, these two papers here, they like doing this kind of stuff of using random walks to generate graphs, but they killed the, the random walk at some point and restarted it. So essentially they put the random walk on a point, let the random, the random walk like take a, a given number of steps. And then after this number of steps, let's say 100 steps, they add a vertex to the position of the walker. So then they kill the wonder walk and put the wonder walk on the initial position again. So this way you can generate a graph using the wonder walk, but you have this restart feature. It was only like 12 years later that people had this idea of just let the, the walker walk on. So Amorim, Figueiredo, Jacobelli, Neglia, they proposed this growing networks for random walks without <laughs> this restart feature. So this was the first appearance of the tree builder random walk. So they considered a model that at each steps of the walker, we add uh, a leaf to the position of the walk with probability one. And what we did here, we just added an extra layer of randomness introducing this leaf process. And we kept S equals one just for simplicity because uh, you can run into some parity uh, problems here. For instance, if S is even, the walk is naturally uh, recurrent just because you cannot push the, the tree uh, further. But, uh, Okay, so 
the kind of the questions that we have, like when we are talking about the random graph perspective, is questions about the geometry and topology of the walker of the tree built by the walker. So, for instance, you can ask how large is the height. So this is an interesting question by itself. Like it gives you some idea about uh, the the um, topology of the tree, but also it's a useful uh, uh, observable because when you um, when it comes to random walks on trees, mixing times you have some upper bound for mixing times that involves the height. Essentially, is the 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 best upper bound that I know for like the best general upper bound that I know for mixing times in, on trees are like the number of verts that you have times the height. And it can also ask like, what is the shape of the degree distribution? So what I mean by this is like, you can compute the fraction of vertices with degree D at time N and just let this uh, limit goes to infinity to see what is happening at infinity. And you can also ask questions about like the maximum degree, for instance, what is the maximum degree of the tree? So these are the questions that we 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 answered uh, in this uh, work in collaboration with Janos Anglander, Julio Jacobelli, and Gabor Piet. So we do have a, a result about the degree distribution. So if you start with an independent leaf process, which is a Bernoulli obeying a Bernoulli distribution with a time dependent parameter, one over n to the gamma, but gamma above two thirds now. So then, if you want to count, if you want to know the proportion of vertices having degree D, so this proportion is 4 divided by D times D plus 1 times D plus 2. So this is a probability distribution. So this is what I mean that you do not have, at the limit, you do not have vertices with infinite degree. Like, it's, it's, uh, uh, there is no mass escaping to infinity. So there is no proportion of vertices with high degree, for instance. And we also have a result about the height. So the height of the tree at time at, at time m n is of order log of the number of vertices that you have at time n. So this guy here is the number of vertices that you added at time n. So observe that the number of vertices that you have added up to time n is of this order here, n to the power of 1 minus gamma. This random variable here is just the sum of n independent random variables. And the expected value is exactly of this order here. So by sure enough bounds, the number of vertices at time n is concentrated around this value here. So all this to say that the order of the height of the tree is log n. So you have this tree with n to the power of 1 minus gamma vertices, but the height is of order log, log n. So the, the trees that are build, building by the, the walker in this regime are like fat trees. They are short with a lot of vertices. And about the maximum degree, it's also of order square root of the number of vertices that you have. So the maximum degree of Tn is of order n to the power of 1 minus gamma divided by 2. And this random variable here, zeta, is positive with probability 1. So this is the, the right order. So any, any questions? How much time do I have? Uh, maybe five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So okay. So let's discuss the the the, the open problems here. Open problems. I'll say okay. So suppose that you have a leaf process, an IID leaf process, which is a Bernoulli for the middle p. So we saw that in this case the leaf process is uniformly elliptic. 
So then the walker is ballistic, but more than that, it, it has a well-defined speed. That depends only on the parameter P because it depends only on the distribution. But then the question is, is this function monotone on P? So this question was suggested by Yuval Perez, and I've done some simulations for this, and the simulations, they indicate that the answer is yes. So the, the function on P in this case is monotone. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a problem that I'd like to solve, I, I, but uh, the problem, as, as I said earlier, it's, it's this lack of uh, monotone coupling to compare uh, different, uh, to compare the speed of two different instances of this, of this model. And of course, you have a real function here, so then you can start asking questions about like, is this function smooth? Uh, so then the, the you can ask all the kind of analytical, you can try to investigate all the sort of analytical properties for these, for this function. But for the recurrent case, not the recurrent case, but for the case in, in which you have Bernoulli leaf process with a time dependent parameter and the and the uh, and the parameters go into zero polynomially fast. The question is, is the walk a transient for gamma below one half? So above one half, we show that the walker is recurrent. But what about below one half? We believe that there is a phase transition here that the model undergoes a phase transition at at one half when it comes to recurrence and, and transients. But uh, we, we we don't know how to to prove it yet. So it, it's also an interesting question because it will close this, uh, the, it will show the, the phase transition at one half. And also another interesting question would be, does the results for gamma above two thirds hold for gamma above one half? What do I mean by this? So all the structure results, when I was talking about the random graph perspectives, all the structure results height degree distribution, uh, uh, maximum degree, they hold only for gamma above two thirds. But observe that they are like showing essentially the same type of result. The degree distribution is exactly the same for any gamma above two thirds. So you do not have dependence on gamma there. Uh, the height is always of order of the log of the number of vertices that you have. Uh, the maximum degree is of order square root of the number of vertices that you have. So above two thirds, you, you know, the trees, they always have these three properties. So the question will be, is it true for actually a uh, game above one half, for instance? Because this, maybe, maybe the model actually has not only one, but two phase transitions. In what sense? Well, one first transition would be at one half for recurrence and, uh, recurrence and transients. Above one half, you are recurrent. Above, uh, below one half, you are transient. But then you would have a different phase transition at two thirds. So at two thirds, the structural results that you have are all the results that we have above two, two thirds. But maybe the trees that are generated by the, the walker between one half and two thirds, they are like they have different properties. For instance, they could have like larger heights. They could have a different uh, uh, degree distribution, for instance. Who knows? So this will show that the model. So this question here, together with this one, uh, maybe uh, would show that the model actually has two um, phase transitions, not only one one for transient occurrence and the other one for structure results. Uh, so any, any, any other questions? I think I'm, uh, I can stop here. Thank you, Rodrigo. Let's thank uh, him. Yes, Muchas gracias. <laughs> So any questions? Um, so I, I have no questions. <laughs> uh, so how do you show continuity on the mesh side? Like how there is a, so you have this continuity on 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Measure to the speed. So what is the main idea? So it, it's this coupling that I, I I more or less described to you. It's you, you can have um, you can see all these process on the same um, space of probability in the same probability space. For instance, I'm just gonna give you an example with with uh, for the Bernoulli case. You can like you start like they walk together. They are walking on the same tree. Okay but with two different parameters. One has a probability P of adding a new leaf, and the other one has a probability P plus epsilon to add a new leaf. And they are walking together until there is this point that uh, this one, the guy with probability P plus epsilon, it can add a leaf that this guy he is not seeing. So then you can, you can let the walkers walking on the same tree but some vertices, one can be seen by only one walker, and some vertices are seen only for the other walker. But observe that if, the, if they have like a really close parameter, you can couple them in a way that the probability of uh, adding a leaf that is not seen for the other walker is epsilon, essentially. So the idea is inspired by this argument in, in percolation where they use uh, uniform random variables to construct like clusters on the same probability space. So that's the, the, the guide, the spirit of the proof. So once you have uh, the walkers on the same probability space walking on the same tree, you can at least, um, you cannot keep them one above the other, but you can control like how likely it is for them to decouple and if, if you one is close to the other, well, the distance are, that they are from the root are, is similar, so the speed is also similar. So you have like a finite size criterion for the speed? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I have a question. Um... There's a lot of results that use that uh, you have the Bernoulli random variables. Mm -hmm. um, how sensitive are your proof if you will, would uh, want to change those for, say, like larger support, but with expectations and tending to zero, for instance? Uh, for instance. Uh, I see. So, yeah, OK. So, the, for instance, the recurrence is a trade-off between the how many vertices you added at yeah. time n and how how much time do you take to add at least one vertex? What is the idea? It's, it, it involves mixing times. So suppose that you added like um, a given number of vertices at some time n. So since the probability of adding a new vertex is going to zero, so it will take a lot of steps for you to add the, at least one vertex, right? It doesn't have to be Bernoulli. But the key point is that if, if the steps that it takes for you to add the next vertex or the next 100,000 ver vertices, if this time is larger than, let's say, the square of the number of vertices that you already have, so what is going to happen is like, you're going to mix on this uh, tree first. So it will be close to the stationary distribution before adding new vertices. So this actually doesn't take into account like how many vertices you're going to add in the future. So I think it's possible to adjust, adjust or arguments to accommodate this kind of situation that you that you suggesting. So it's always, how do you compare how much time you're going to take to add the new, new vertices, plural here, with the number of vertices that you already have? If, if, the, if the number of steps that you need to add more than one vertices is much larger than the number of vertices that you already have, so this means, this means that you have a chance to mix on this frozen tree before the new vertices come. And this is crucial because then you'll be close to stationary distribution. So then you kind of know the distribution of the walker. So then you can force the walker to visit some vertices that you want 
And then you, you make sure that you are recurrent, for instance. Thank you very much. Thank of course. So I, I have one more question. I wanted to ask about the, the theorem with the maximum degree. Mm -hmm. like, like, can you say something about the random variable Z? I mean, how do you get that? Where does it come from? Oh, yeah. So yeah, this is an interesting question. And the answer is, so is actually the way we get this result this result is coming from results about another random graph model called Barabaj Albert or preferential attachment model. What we do, we construct like a, a theorem that gives you some sort of transfer principle. What we have actually is given certain condition on the leaf process, you can couple the, 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 the tree process at some uh, stopping times with the barabazi albert model in a way that if you have some results that holds for the barabazi albert model for the graph, then you can send them back to the trees that have been built by the walker. So this variable here, in a sense, is the variable that is given by the, um, the barabazi albert model. And then, for instance, this random variable is uh, absolute continued with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Uh, it has finite moments, all finite moments. Uh, so there are some results about the, this limit object here. But we are gaining it for free from, we are importing it from other, other, um, other model. OK, thanks. Okay, uh, I, I think I have a, a, a question here. Ah, OK, no. It's... So there is one here. So you run this process, you eventually obtain an infinite tree. And uh, how many ends is this going to have? Of course, if we take dependence, hmm? sorry. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 not, I'm not here, you. I'm sorry. Uh, say that again. The, the microphone is a bit better. So I think you need to speak. I don't oh. know why it's. I will try to yell at it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for yelling at me. You obtain an infinite three after you run this process, right? And yes. you have a number of ends. So, of course, if we take dependence on uh, the state of the graph, we can have however many ends we want. But let's say we don't do that. Let's say that Xn is made up of independent random variables. We can mm -hmm. have ends by making Xn eventually zero. You can achieve one mm -hmm. end by just taking the walk, the walk to be transient. How many ends can we achieve in general? Are all, all the numbers achievable, or is it like only two and infinite, or something like that? Or ah, uh, okay, okay. So, yeah. So this is something that I didn't mention, but uh, like for the um, for the ballistic case, we have only what we generate here are one-ended trees. Yeah. Right. But you're suggesting maybe there is a way to generate like uh, trees with uh, more than one end? Yeah, even for two ended, if you try to to imitate the gambler's ruin, you have to take a dependence that you know if I am if I return back to the vertex I have revisited, then I do not add. So yeah, okay. So you you could. Yeah, perhaps you could make you could put some dependence on the leaf process, like like you suggest, and somehow like uh, the leaf process look at the structure that you already have. But with dependence, uh, without dependence is the question. Oh, if, without dependence. Okay, so, but you mean in in the transient case or in the recurrent case? In the it has to be in the recurrent to get so, more. Okay. So in the recurrent case, you have actually uh, infinite ends. Always? No, yeah, I, I don't know. Like for that case, about two thirds, yes. Uh -huh. Between one half and two thirds, I don't know. Because what we have is recurrence above one half. And we know some structure results above two thirds. Above two thirds, it's uh, uh, above two thirds and smaller than one, obviously, right? Because above one, the tree will be finite. But uh, b between two thirds and one, what do you, what do you have is in infinite ends. But uh, uh, between one half and two thirds, I 
I don't know. I don't know. This could be an interesting question because it could be a way, for instance, to differentiate the regimes. For instance, if you show that uh, between one half and two thirds, you have, for instance, just one end or finitely many ends. So this would mean that the tree is completely different of the tree that you have above two thirds, two thirds and one. Yes, because there's also this whole topic of uh, uh, model archaeology, trying to find the distribution from. So maybe that's. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, if there are no more questions, then we thank Rodrigo again. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time.